Good morning. We're in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, page 1106 in the scriptures. Another epistle of Shaul, Saul, the apostle Paul. How interesting is it? We just get done reading about Shaul in the Old Testament in 1 Samuel 18, 19, 20. And this disobedient person trying to kill the chosen of Yah. And we fast forward to the epistles in the New Testament. And we have the story of this disobedient person who was killing the chosen of Yah. And who got smacked down on the road to Damascus. And was made new, was healed by Ananias. One of the very people he was looking to find to go kill. I would say he's nurtured by Ananias. He was healed by Yah. And now he's so on fire that he can't help but get his butt in a sling. <laughs> the. It's not a coincidence that we have Shaul as one of the evilest men in the Old Testament, and we have Shaul as one of the greatest servants of Yah in the New Testament. Paints a really lovely picture about how the involvement, the intercession of Yeshua can absolutely change somebody's life. Shaul, Saul, the Apostle Paul. Shaul of Tarsus, a called emissary of Yeshua Messiah by the desire of Elohim and brother Sosthenes, to the assembly of Elohim, which is at Corinth. So from Shaul to the assembly of Elohim, who is at Corinth, to those which are set apart in Messiah Yeshua, called set apart ones, with all those calling on the name of Yeshua, Messiah, our master in every place, theirs and ours. Favor to you and peace from Elohim, our father, and the master, Yeshua, Messiah, I thank my Elohim always concerning you for the favor of Elohim which was given to you by Messiah Yeshua, that in him you were enriched in all, in every word and all knowledge, in every word and all knowledge. Through Yeshua Messiah you have been enriched in every word and all knowledge, a completeness of understanding. Matthew 5, 17, what does Messiah say? Truly, truly, I say unto you, I come not to destroy the Torah or the prophets, but to complete it. And we've talked about this at great length. The Torah is an external thing. It's rules on how we love Yahweh, our Elohim, with everything we've got and love our neighbor as ourself. The prophets are a commentary on how not keeping those rules and laws drastically destroys our relationship with our creator and then the completeness of is the restoration through Yeshua back to the father and the prophesied biblical Messiah was not somebody that did away with the law it was somebody that restored the father's people through the law but in order to know that you have to read your Old Testament in its entirety and I would submit from Genesis 1 all the way up to Matthew one chronologically in order so that in him you were enriched in all in every word and all knowledge and Paul is the the king of run on sentences as the witness of Messiah was confirmed in you so that you are not lacking in any gift eagerly waiting for the revelation of our master Yeshua Messiah who shall also confirm you to the end unreprovable in the day of our master Yeshua Messiah so John 15 verses 5 through 14 comes to mind with that first passage in 1 Corinthians I am the vine you are the branches he who stays in me and I in him he bears much fruit because without me you are able to do nothing this is Yeshua speaking 
If anyone does not stay in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burned. You don't hear this preached from many pulpits nowadays. If you stay in me and my words stay in you, you shall ask whatever you wish and it shall be done for you. In this my father is esteemed that you bear much fruit and you shall be my taught ones. You don't ask in the name of Yeshua for you. You ask in the name of Yeshua to bear much fruit on behalf of Elohim. And in this you are his taught ones. As the Father has loved me, I have also loved you. Stay in my love. If you guard my commands, you shall stay in my love. Even as I have guarded my Father's commands and stay in his love. (sighs) These words I have spoken to you so that your joy might be complete. So that my joy might be in you and that your joy might be complete. This is my command that you love one another as I have also loved you. No one has greater love than this that one should lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do whatever I command you. If you guard my commands you shall stay in my love even as I have guarded my father's commands and stay in his love. Which of, in my mind gets back to Deuteronomy 30 verses 6 through 8. Yeah, we're going to do some flippage this morning. If you're new here, welcome. We've got lots of playlists, Old Testament, New Testament, agree, disagree, whatever. Let's just remain civil, all right? Deuteronomy 36 through 8. And Yahuwah, your Elohim, shall circumcise your heart and the heart of your seed to love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart and with all your soul, so that you might live And Yahweh your Elohim shall put all these curses on your enemies and on those who hate you and persecuted you. And you shall turn back and obey the voice of Yahweh and do all his commands which I command you today. So flipping all the way forward back to 1 Corinthians. We'll start again at 4. One four, I thank my Elohim always concerning you for the favor of Elohim which was given to you by Messiah, Yeshua, that in him you were enriched in all, in every word, and all knowledge, as the witness of Messiah was confirmed in you, so that you are not lacking in any gift, eagerly waiting for the revelation of our Master, Yeshua, Messiah, who shall also confirm you to the end, unreprovable in the day of our Master, Yeshua, Messiah." unreprovable you are beyond reproach you are without sin first john 3 verse 4 sin is lawlessness and all who sin do lawlessness if you love me keep my commands as i have kept my father's commands says messiah Elohim is trustworthy by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son yeshua messiah our master I appeal to you, brothers, by the name of our Master Yeshua Messiah, that you all agree that there be no divisions among you, but that you be knit together in the same mind and the same opinion. For I have been informed concerning you, my brothers, by those of the house of Chloe, that there are strifes among you. What I mean is this, that each one of you says, I am of Shaul, or I am am of Apollos, or I am of Kepha, Peter, or I am of... I am of Messiah. Has the Messiah been divided? Was Shaul, was Paul impaled for you? Or were you immersed in the name of Paul? I want to just put that on a billboard. Because I've heard so many times from so many people. But Paul said... Now, Paul's words are certainly divinely inspired. And they are here in this Bible. There's the doctrine of inerrancy, which was uh, codified in 1977, I believe, that says that as Christians, we agree that this word is without error. Copy. 
I would agree that it's divinely inspired, and I would also remind people that Christian is derived from Christios, which is a Greek word that was derogatory, meaning a follower of Christ. And so I would encourage anybody who identifies as a Christian to follow Messiah, which is following is a verb, you got to do it. You don't talk about it, you don't think about it, you don't even pray about it necessarily, you do it. And in the doing of, then you talk about it, then you think about it, then you pray about it, then you evangelize about it, you do it. First Peter 2.21 comes to mind there. Has Messiah been divided, or was Shaul impaled for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? Yeah, but Paul said, Paul was like a Supreme Court level attorney regarding the Torah. He knew it. He knew the law. It was his job to know the law. He was classically trained in it. He very likely had his own copy of the Torah. He knew it in and out, front and back, left to right, off the top of his head. And so when people argue that Paul said, without knowing the Torah or doing the Torah, I usually tune out. I just kind of blah, 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 blah. Because I can equate it to when I'm operating a bulldozer, I'm doing it, and there's somebody standing on the side of the project that hasn't done it that's read, let's see, maybe assuming that they've actually read the entirety of the New Testament, that's only read this much of the user manual for the dozer, and has ignored all of this much of the user manual. They've only read this much of it. So they've only read 30% of the user manual. And they don't operate the dozer. So when they're screaming at me from the sidelines that I'm doing it wrong, while I'm doing it, after having, having read the entirety of the user manual and doing it every day, it makes me kind of makes it kind of difficult for me to listen being perfectly honest and then when they say well the caterpillar mechanic said per the manual that i get it but he read the whole manual and he operates the dozer as well as understanding the intricacies of how to fix the dozer so you can take what the caterpillar man has to say, but you better understand the subject matter on what the caterpillar mechanic is talking about in order for it to make sense while you're reading the entirety of the user manual for the dozer and operating it, because that's what Shaul did. And even then, he says, but you were not baptized in the name of Shaul. Shaul was not crucified. The Apostle Paul was not crucified. Messiah was. You're not baptized in the name of the Apostle Paul. You're baptized in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Jesus the Christ. He is the ultimate authority here. I want that verse on a billboard. Has the Messiah been divided, or was Paul impaled for you, crucified for you? Or were you immersed in the name of Paul? Were you baptized in the name of Paul? I thank Elohim that I immersed not one of you except Crispus and Gaius, and that no one should say I baptized in my own name. Now I did also baptize the household of Stephanus. For the rest, I do not know whether I baptized anyone else. For Messiah did not send me to baptize, but to bring the good news, not with the wisdom of words, that... The stake of Messiah should not be nullified. For the word of the cross, the stake, the timber, is indeed foolishness to those who are perishing. But to those who are being saved, it is the power of Elohim. For it has been written, I shall destroy the wisdom of the wise and set aside the learning of the learned ones. Where is the wise? Where is the scholar? Where is the debater of this age? Has not Elohim made foolish the wisdom of this world? 
For since, in the wisdom of Elohim, the world through wisdom did not know Elohim, it pleased Elohim through the foolishness of preaching to save those who believe. And since Yehudim ask a sign, and the Greeks seek wisdom, yet we proclaim Messiah impaled, to the Yehudim a stumbling block, and to the Greeks foolishness. But to those who are called, 1 Peter 2.21, both the Jews and the Greeks, the Yehudim and the nations, the Israelites and the Gentiles, Messiah, the power of Elohim, and the wisdom of Elohim. For the foolishness of Elohim is wiser than men, and the weakness of Elohim is stronger than men. For look at your calling, brothers, that there were not many wise according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble. But Elohim has chosen the foolish matters of the world to put shame to the wise. And Elohim has chosen the weak of the world to put shame to the strong. And Elohim has chosen the lowborn of the world and the despised and the ones that are not, that he might bring to nothing the ones that are, so that no flesh should boast in his presence. And of him you are in Yeshua Messiah, who became for us wisdom from Elohim, became for us wisdom from Elohim, Righteousness also, and set apartness and redemption, that as it has been written, he who boasts, let him boast in Yahuwah. Well, there's a lot about wisdom in there, and that, of course, brings up, in my mind, Proverbs 2. The wisdom of Elohim, remember over here, that it says in one five that in him, in Yeshua, you were enriched in all, in every word, and all knowledge. So flip to Proverbs 2. Sorry if I'm sounding combative right now. I'm uh, I'm hurting. I'm not gonna lie. Proverbs two. My son, page seven thirty one. My son, if you accept my words and treasure up my commands with you, so that you make your ear attend to wisdom. If you accept my words and treasure, treasure up my commands with you so that you make your ear attend to wisdom, so that you will hear wisdom. Think about that in and of itself. It says here in Corinthians, And of him you are in Yeshua Messiah, who became for us the wisdom of Elohim. I come not to destroy the Torah of the prophets, but to complete it. That word in the Greek is pleirau. It means to be, to become, to embody. He embodied it. He was the physical manifestation of the word of Elohim, and the word became flesh. We see this in John, the Gospel of John, chapter 1. The word became flesh, the word of Elohim. What word do you think that is? He says all over John, I give you no word but that word that you've had from the beginning. From the beginning, it's the same word. It was never done away with. It's one of the biggest lies in Christendom, the idea that that word was done away with. It was nailed to the cross. What was nailed to the cross was the doctrines and dogmas of men, not the word of God. The religiosity of the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, the high priests, the corruption of men who put Yahuwah's stamp on their bullcrap and called it religion, that was nailed to the cross by Yeshua. That was done away with. But the commands of Elohim are not of men. They come straight from the, the mouth of God. That was not nailed to the cross. And of him you are Messiah Yeshua, who became for us wisdom from Elohim. My son, if you accept my commands and treasure up my commands with you, so that you make your ear attendant to wisdom, Incline your heart to understanding, for if you cry for discernment, lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as hidden treasures, then you would understand the fear of Yahuwah and find the knowledge of Elohim. For Yahuwah gives wisdom. Out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. In Revelation 19, out of his mouth comes what? A sword. That sword is the word. The word is knowledge an understanding. It's that same word that destroys the nations, those that don't believe. And he treasures up stability for the straight, a shield to those walking blamelessly, to watch over the paths of right ruling and the way of his lovingly committed ones he guards. 
then you would understand righteousness. What is righteousness? We know this from the Gospel of Luke. Luke, New Testament Gospel, Luke 1 verse 6, blamelessly walking in the commands of Yah. Blamelessly, meaning doing it the best that you can. So if you treasure up the commands and make your ears attend to wisdom and incline your heart to understanding and cry for discernment and lift up your voice to Yahuwah and fear him and find the knowledge of Elohim, then you would understand righteousness. You can't understand righteousness unless you're doing these things. Blamelessly, doing your best to do these things. Then you would understand righteousness and right ruling and straightness, every good path, for wisdom would enter your heart. I've got Jesus in here. Wisdom would enter your heart and knowledge be pleasant to your soul. Discretion would guard you. Understanding would watch over you to deliver you from the evil way, from the man who speaks perversities. Those who leave the paths of straightness to walk in the ways of darkness, who rejoice to do evil, they delight in the perversity, the perversities of evil, whose paths are crooked, and they are perverted in their ways, to deliver you from the strange woman, from the foreigner who flatters with her words. Remember, the woman is an allusion to the church here. And has forgotten the covenant of her Elohim, the church who flatters with her words, who forsakes the companion of her youth, the word that you had from the beginning, and has forgotten the covenant of Elohim. For her house is sunk down to death, and her paths are of the dead. None going into her does return, nor do they reach the paths of life. So walk in the way of goodness and guard the paths of righteousness. For the straight shall dwell on the earth and the perfect be left in it. But the wrong shall be cut off from the earth and the treacherous ones plucked out of it. Corinthians 1.30 And of him you are in Messiah Yeshua who became for us wisdom from Elohim righteousness also and set apartness and redemption that as it has been written he who boasts let him boast in yahuwah and when i came to you brothers i did not come with excellence of speech or wisdom proclaiming to you the witness of elohim for i resolved not to know any matter among you except you yeshua messiah and him impaled i didn't come here to talk about anything but yeshua And I was with you in weakness and in fear and much trembling. And my word and my preaching were not with persuasive words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit of power. In order that your belief should not be in the wisdom of men, but in the power of Elohim. Yet we speak wisdom among those who are perfect. And not the wisdom of this age, nor the rulers of this age that are being brought to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of Elohim which was hidden in secret and which Elohim ordained before the ages of our glory. We speak the wisdom of Elohim. We just saw wisdom in Proverbs chapter 2. We speak the wisdom of Elohim. Treasure up these commands. Incline your ear to understanding. Which was hidden in secret. You know why it was hidden in secret? Contextually, what he's speaking about here is the same reason that Yeshua railed against the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the scribes, the high priests. Because it was no longer being taught. The Torah was not being taught. The commands of Yah were not being taught. The commands of men were being taught. The same thing that was nailed to the cross and done away with. The commands of men were being taught. That's why Yeshua came to embody, to be the Word made flesh. To restore the Father's people to the Father. You cannot find... In this Bible, a prophecy that says the Mashiach, the Messiah, the Anointed One, will destroy the Father's law. In fact, I can show you several places where it says anybody that does that is a false prophet and is to be killed. That's not a biblical Messiah. It's a Christian Messiah, but it's not a biblical Messiah. And unfortunately, Christianity is no longer very biblical in today's day and age. 
And it amazes me how many people are constitutional literalists, documents, perhaps even divinely inspired, yet written by men, but aren't biblical literalists. What does the Bible say? Well, you see, you have to interpret it this way. Oh, interesting. So you've made the laws of man more important than your relationship with your father. You don't want those interpreted. It is what it says. Shall not be infringed. Yeah, you're right. Guard to do these commands. Well, yeah, but we don't really have to. You made your flag your Elohim. Don't get me wrong. It's a great flag. It's a great country. And I love it. But I don't love it more than my creator. I don't put more weight in what that founding document says than what this founding document says. It amazes me how many hoops people will jump through to not have to shift their paradigm to live with the blinders on for the rest of their life. Here all the time. I prefer dangerous freedom than comfortable slavery. You're in comfortable slavery if you haven't read the entirety of this book, if you're not doing it. If you've put a pastor, a priest, a rabbi, a bishop in between you and the Father, if you haven't opened this word for yourself and prayed over it and said, Father, speak to me. Yeah, you're in comfortable slavery. But we speak the wisdom of Elohim, which was hidden in secret, and which Elohim ordained before the ages for our glory, which no one of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known, they would not have impaled the master of glory. If these people knew the Torah, they wouldn't have killed Yeshua. They wouldn't have killed Jesus. They wouldn't have put him on the cross. Right here in black and white in the New Testament from the mouth of Paul. They didn't know the Torah. That's why he came. Truly, truly, I say unto you, until heaven and earth passes away, not one jot, not one tittle shall pass from the Torah till all be done. Till heaven and earth passes away. I don't know about heaven. I've never been there, but earth is still here. So from the mouth of Messiah himself in Matthew 5, 17, the Torah is still in play. Till heaven and earth pass away. Hasn't happened. What does Paul say here? But we speak the wisdom of Elohim. We just saw in Proverbs 2, the wisdom of Elohim is to treasure up these commands in our heart. We speak these treasured up commands in our heart, which was hidden in a secret, which Elohim ordained. Elohim, Father God, gave them to us before the ages of our glory, which none of the rulers of this age knew that nobody today knows. For if they had known... They wouldn't have crucified Jesus if they had these commands in their heart. They wouldn't have crucified Jesus, says Paul, in the New Testament, in First Corinthians two. But Paul says, has the Messiah been divided? Was Paul crucified for you, or were you baptized in the name of Paul? But we speak the wisdom of Elohim, which was hidden in a secret, and which Elohim ordained before the ages of our glory, which no one of the rulers of this age knew, for if they had known, they would have not impaled the master of glory. But as it has been written, eye has not seen, and ear has not heard, nor have entered into the heart of man what Elohim has prepared for those who love him. Entered into the heart of man. Don't you know what the renewed covenant is in Hebrews 8, 6-13? That you will have his laws, his laws, on your mind and written on your heart. And then he will be your Elohim and you will be his people. That is the renewed covenant, ladies and gentlemen. So the whole idea that we, oh, we don't have to do that anymore. I'm under the new covenant. Covenant. You are only under the new covenant if you have Yeshua as intercessor. This is per Hebrews 8. Go read it. You are only under the renewed covenant. Renewed, not new, renewed made new through Messiah, the atoning sacrifice of Messiah. If you have Yeshua as intercessor, if you confess him as Messiah, and you have the laws in your mind and written on your heart, and then he will be your Elohim and you will be his people. Yep, 
hidden right there in the New Testament in black and white in the book of Hebrews. Crazy. I know. I know. I'm insane because I read my Bible. I'm on the fifth time reading it through. I'm crazy that I read this book and do what it says. I'm an extremist to make people uncomfortable that their Sunday morning box checker mentality doesn't actually count for a personal relationship with their creator. John 15. Spent a lot of John, a lot of time in John this morning. That's okay. John 15. I am the true vine and my father is the gardener. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, every branch in me that bears no fruit, he takes away. Are you bearing fruit? Oh, you claim Messiah? You're a little branch off the vine? That's cool. Are you bearing fruit? Or are you just going through the motions, checking the boxes? Sunday morning, get up, drink coffee, take a shower, Dress up, look good, go to church, pretend that we give a damn. Okay, smile, wave, nod, pray, sing a couple songs. Football game's on this afternoon. I'm out. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes so that it bears more fruit. You, have ar you are already clean because you have the word which I have spoken to you. The word in the beginning was the word and the word was made flesh. Stay in me and I stay in you. Stay in me, and I stay in you. Once saved, always saved. Stay in me, and I stay in you. As the branch is unable to bear fruit of itself unless it stays in the vine, so neither you unless you stay in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who stays in me and I in him, he bears much fruit, because without me, you are able to do nothing. If anyone does not stay in me, he is thrown away as a branch and dries up. And they gather them and throw them into the fire, and they are burned. If you stay in me, and my words stay in you, if you shall ask whatever you wish, and it shall be done for you. In this my Father is glorified, that you bear much fruit, and you shall be my taught ones. As the Father has loved me, I also loved you. Stay in my love. If you guard my commands, you shall stay in my love even as I have guarded my Father's commands and stay in his love. Well, that doesn't sound like a really friendly, happy, lovey-dovey Jesus right there. There's lots of, lots of ifs in there. Back to 1 Corinthians 2, verse 9. But as it has been written, eye has not seen and ear has not heard, nor have entered into the heart of man that Elohim has prepared for those who love him. Entered into your heart. Guard these commands. But Elohim has revealed them to us through his spirit. For the spirit searches all matters, even the depths of Elohim. For who among men knows the thoughts of a man except the spirit of the man that is in him? So also the thoughts of Elohim no one has known except the spirit of Elohim. And we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is from Elohim in order to know what Elohim has favorably given us which we also speak, not in words which man's wisdom teaches, but which the set-apart Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, teaches, comparing, comparing spiritual matters with spiritual matters. But the natural, natural man does not receive the matters of the Spirit of Elohim, for they are foolishness to him, and he is unable to know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he who is spiritual discerns indeed all matters, but he himself is discerned by no one. Boy, does that ring true to me. For who has known the mind of Yahuwah? Who shall instruct him? But we have the mind of Messiah. And I, brothers, was not able to speak to you as to spiritual ones, but as to fleshly, as to babes in Messiah. There was stuff I was trying to tell you, but you were so young you wouldn't even understand it. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it, and even now you are still not able. Man, there's so many things I want to tell you, but you, you can't even grasp it. It will kill you, the gravity of what I have to say to you. For you are still fleshly, for since there is envy and strife and divisions among you, you are not fleshly and walk, are you not fleshly and walking according to man? I fed you with milk and not with solid food. 
What does Messiah say to Peter in John 21, 15 through 17? Peter, do you love me? Yes, Master, I love you. Feed my lambs. Roger that. Yes, sir. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Master, I love you. I just told you that. Good. Shepherd my flock. Yes, sir. Peter, do you love me? Damn it, I just told you that I love you. What are you, what are you getting at here, Jesus? Feed my sheep. And weeping, Peter says, yes, sir. There's milk for the lambs. There's food. There's meat for the sheep in here. You can't feed a sheep what you feed a lamb. The sheep will starve to death on that watered-down milk. It's not enough. You can't feed a lamb what you feed a sheep because the lamb will choke on it. They can't digest it. It's too much. There's too much substance to it. It'll kill them. Raise your hand if your front yard's full of sheep. I get this parable. And I, brothers, was not able to speak to you as to spiritual ones, but as to fleshly, as to babes in the Messiah. I fed you with milk and not with solid food, for until now you were not able to receive it. And even now you are still not able, for you are still fleshly. For since there is envy and strife and divisions among you, you are you not fleshly and walking according to man? James 1, 19 and 20. The wrath of man does not work the righteousness of Elohim. Does not work... The righteousness of Elohim. For one says, I am of Shaul, and another says, I am of Apollos. Are you not fleshly? What then is Apollos, and what is Shaul but servants through whom you believed as to the master assigned to each? I planted, Apollos watered, but Elohim was giving growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters any at all, but Elohim who gives the increase. And he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are fellow workers of Elohim, and you are the field of Elohim, the building of Elohim. According to the favor of Elohim, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But each one should look how he builds. For no one is able to lay any other foundation except that which is laid, which is Yeshua Messiah. And if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, whatever, each one's work shall be revealed. For the day shall show it up because it is revealed by fire. And the fire shall prove the work of each one what sort it is. If anyone's works remain, which he is built on, he shall receive a reward. And if anyone's work is burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, but so as through fire. Do you not know that you are a dwelling place of Elohim, and that the spirit of Elohim dwells in you? If anyone destroys the dwelling place of Elohim, Elohim shall destroy him. For the dwelling place of Elohim is set apart, which you are. Let no one deceive himself. If anyone among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become foolish so that he might become wise. Unlearn everything you know about the world. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with Elohim. For it has been written, he catches the wise in their craftiness. And again, Yahuwah knows the thoughts of the wise, but they are worthless. So then, let no one boast in men. For all belongs to you, whether Shaul or Apollos or Peter or or the world, or life, or death, or the present, or the future, all belongs to you, and you belong to Messiah, and Messiah belongs to Elohim. Bless y'all. Shalom.